Hey guys, it's episode 191. I went to chapters a week ago or so. And anyways, I bought a couple of books. Um, most of them are like educational, I would say. Um, but I originally went there to get Oxford dictionaries because I do have an English class. What happens is in the beginning of the year before you start your program, they make you take a test called a language assessment. Um, it's just a simple test where they give you two topics and then you have to pick from them. You have to write a persuasive paragraph. I think when you put me on the spot, I'm really bad at writing. Um, I'm kind of like borderline okay at writing. I can speak English fluently because it is my first language, but when it comes to writing, the teaching method is very different and it's very difficult because normally in high school they make you read stuff and then they expect you to write based on that. So it's very difficult to like make out, like make some sentences that are properly structured. So I guess under pressure I don't do well. So I didn't pass it, but they make you take a course called <clears throat> Uh, it's called, uh, what was it? It was, uh, I forgot the course that I was in. But basically, it's a hybrid course because it's a prerequisite of, um, it's called Communications Foundation. So it's a prerequisite of, um, this other course called Essential, um, Language... I think, or something like that, but it's an English course, and they're all English courses. I think because a lot of Chinese people go there, like, I noticed some Chinese people in my class only speak English. I think they came up with the rule that you have to take that test because I noticed when they talk, they have a very strong accent, or they only talk in Chinese to each other. So with that being said, I think they kind of assume that people will do that so they want to make sure you can actually speak English for this course. Um, <clears throat> if you don't pass, they put you in the prerequisite, the communications foundations. Um, they just, I don't know, I think they just want to make sure that you can speak English so that way you're able to actually graduate and find a job here in Canada. I don't know. I don't know why. It's a bit ridiculous to me just because I have been, I was like born in Canada. So basically, I kind of speak English. Like, English is my first language, but I don't speak other languages. Like, even though I know Mandarin, I'm not fluent. So it kind of upsets me that I have to take a prerequisite and the and then the essentials. But that's just how they run. It might annoy some people, like, if you go there. But, yeah. So I have those dictionaries. Um, but I'm not going to show them just because they're boring. And one is in my bag. <clears throat> So, the first thing I got, I took out the paper because I didn't want to ruin it if I brought it outside. But it's a manga called Wolf Children. Wolf Children. Um, you'll see the beautiful artwork by you, and uh, it's just very nice. Um, the story is incredible. Um, let's see inside pictures. You can see some artwork. Uh, if you want to see about it, you can pause. I'll try to hold this thing straight for a little bit. But you can pause if you want. And yeah. I think these are also from the same author. But I haven't seen those. Uh, I did watch the movie on YouTube. It It's not like an anime anime. It's like an anime movie. So it's like one of those films. Um... But the reason why I love this story so much is because it kind of talks about, like, single parenting and how it can be a struggle if you don't know, like, that much about taking ch care of children. And, like, I think it's that her children 
like they're they're both one of them is slightly older but they both want to be something else when they grow up so it's very difficult if they're like complete opposites from each other uh i think in the part they do get into an argument about that but anyways <clears throat> i recommend it if you're into like those family oriented type of animes um it's very like heartwarming like and i think it's good for i really want my dad to see the movie we bought one from pacific mall um but i looked at the pricing at like sunrise records it was around like 30 bucks so it is quite expensive i don't know why I might go there and see if they have it in the store. I saw it in Fan Expo, so I don't know if they'll, like, have it. I should have bought it just because, you know, it supports the artists more. But anyways, I recommend it. Um, <clears throat> it just teaches, like, it just shows the hardship about, like, single parents and stuff. And I think, like... It's really good, and also, it's very cute. So, yeah. So, here it is. Um, the cover is blank, but it does have this on the spine. Um, Yen Press. I don't know. I like Yen Press a lot because a lot of... Um, I know Maximum Ride is a Western ma made manga. It's like by a Western artist, and she uh, actually. <coughs> um, I think the books were also published by Yen Press. Maybe um, I'm not sure, but it did have this symbol on. I don't know. Every time I see Yen Press, I feel like it's gonna be a good book. But anyways. I'm not going by that. I'm going by, like, what I saw. <coughs> Some pages are colored. These This book was around 30 bucks, too. Like, 35 bucks. So, <coughs> definitely, if you want the movie and this, it's going to be quite costly. I don't know why they only print it in hard copy, but hardcover. But that means it will cost more, and it's heavier to carry around. Um... It's a good collection piece, I think. Like, if you like collecting manga, then hard copy is really good. Um, there are some colored pictures that are laminated, and then it gets to, like, the actual um, book. And then in between, I think, some were laminated, too. So yeah, basically this is um, 35 bucks. Um, it's more with tax, like 38, like around 40-ish bucks. So definitely one of the more expensive things, one of the more expensive books. Um, most of the books that I get aren't 30 bucks. They're like 15 at least, at the most, I think. I just find the cheaper deal, like the good deals, or the standard books. But this one isn't standard. It's very thick and it's a hardcover. Other mangas aren't hardcover, so they're not that expensive. But I do know, like Hatsune Miku, um, <clears throat> you know those art books. Those ones are very costly. They're like forty bucks each, and they're not that thick, but they're pretty big, like in height wise um yeah i've never bought those books because they just seem to be a bit overpriced to me i don't know i think like spending that much for something that's not that big is pretty expensive <clears throat> so i'm gonna take this out first i got this cantonese book phrase book and dictionary um so, this is very different from the Japanese books, and excuse this for now, but anyways, I'm going to compare a little. Japanese is kind of like, if you went and traveled, like this type of book, if you went and traveled and you wanted to know how to ask like 
say simple phrases or greetings or ask like questions about <coughs> you know stuff about menus and stuff then these are the types of books you will want to look at when you're looking at languages <coughs> if you want to like travel and you want to know how to like look at food and stuff then these are the books but this is a more intimate thing i feel like this cantonese book is like it has a relationship phrases inside it has different things there's like banking and stuff i think it's more if you want to know this and you want to actually study the language completely not saying that you can't study off of this but this is more like it's more like travel it's more it's better for travel i would say just because it has a bunch of words that associate with like food and stuff it doesn't have anything about like relationships or anything intimate when you're talking to someone it's just basic stuff you need to survive that kind of, those kind of phrases so i think this would be good for traveling i just got it in case i would travel to japan one day not that doesn't mean i'm going now but maybe in the future hopefully um I know a lot of people want to learn how to speak Japanese, like my cousin, she's learning how to speak Japanese and all of that. Um, actually, I'm not really one of those people who are into that. I kind of just say, you know, maybe this book will be helpful so that way I won't get lost or anything or I can order something. But I'm not going to like learn Japanese full on like other people. I feel like... A lot of people do that, and then, <clears throat> you know, it would only be useful if I were going to live there or something. I find that's the only useful time to learn the language, so I'm not going to learn it, but I am going to keep this in mind, like, bring this if I ever go, because I'll probably get lost. Um, <clears throat> my dad is... My dad got this book, uh, we're gonna share it, but it's basically, it shows different parts of food and stuff, and different things like that, I'll just flip through, but it's really good if you want to know, like, different objects and how to say them, parts of the human body, I guess, um, and it's good for that, and you can just learn a bit. Again, this is good for travel, too, because if you need to know how to say a food, I think some of it is in here. <coughs> um, however, I don't think they have pinging, which is, um, I say pinging, but it's, that's the Chinese um, word for pronunciation. Um, China, Chinese, like Mandarin and Cantonese, have pinging. Um, which are like different pronunciations of combinations of letters. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, if you understand what I'm saying, then you under then you know what I'm talking about. Um, but basically, pinging is the combinations of letters pronounced equals to that. But they have like <coughs> Chinese and Mandarin is like you remember those pingings and when you see it in a word you can pronounce it that way um however this book does not tell you like <coughs> how to pronounce it correctly it just tells you like let's see let's see um sorry i only have one hand it's not focusing Okay, so for example, you can see smaller is this, but I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it doesn't tell you how to actually pronounce it, because I know in different languages, there are different ways of pronouncing different combinations of letters, so if I use English pronunciation, it might sound a bit weird, and people will know I'm a foreigner, so that's the only thing. But it's fine because I don't really want to learn the language fully. <coughs> but I will try my best to kind of understand how it works. So, um, 
In Canadian dollars, this book was $7.99. It's a Japanese phrase book and dictionary. So kind of like this, but it's different within what it has. This one, there's a whole bunch for different languages. $18.95 for Canada. And this Cantonese one was... $13.99, so it is a bit pricey in Canada. But anyways, I bought this Cantonese book because Bunny Lord speaks Cantonese. Um, I kind of partially speak Mandarin. Like, I know, like, survival phrases. Like, you know, when I say survival phrases, I mean, like, asking where's the washroom, saying hi, and those, like, common phrases you would use to, like, survive in the place. As long as you know those, you kind of know how to survive if you were to go to that country for a bit. But other than that, I don't really know how to say many things. Um, <clears throat> hopefully I don't get confused though, because sometimes I do get confused. My dad sometimes goes to like Cantonese restaurants and he speaks Cantonese and then ends up I learn a food in Chinese and then turns out I was saying it in the Cantonese instead of Mandarin so there is that confusion that I have sometimes <clears throat> and no I can't tell if it's Cantonese or Mandarin um sometimes like if he says the name of a food I can't tell if but if he says it in a phrase, I probably can pick up that it's Cantonese. And that's all. Um, I don't really... S I can partially understand because there are some words that sound similar just with, like... Just one... One sounds heavier than the other. Like, there's a heavy accent. So, yeah. So, that's it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, my next video, hopefully it will be a drawing video. I don't know for sure right now, but yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry that just fell there, but yeah. Bye.